Amgen.com, Amgen and Honeywell entering the Dow, replacing Exxon, Pfizer, and Raytheon, respectively. And for more on this, we are joined by Howard Silverblatt. He's a senior industry analyst, index investment strategy for S&P Dow Jones Indices. Howard, great to have you on the program. So, so let's just get to, I think, the name that stu- stuck out to me and I think many others last night, Salesforce replacing Exxon. Um, just kind of talk us through the thinking uh, of the committee um, in making that change to the Dow. Mm-hmm. Before I get into that, you need to do through Apple because Apple has a four for one stock split. By in and of itself, Apple went from 12% of the Dow down to 3% of the Dow. And it takes technology within the Dow, and technology is hot, obviously, no matter how you measure it, from 27% down to 20 So the fact that Apple was splitting four for one, and we had other changes that we wished to do, all came together, okay? I'm not saying that without Apple's adjustment that these would not have been changed, but it made it come together. Uh, To get get into uh, the Exxon situation and uh, the sales force, one of the items we wished to do was to maintain a higher presence in technology. Because of that Apple split, it went from 27 in tech down to 20. Putting in Salesforce is another way to bolster it. It does go back up to 23, less than the 27, but more than the 20. That puts it in there. On the other side, Exxon, uh, which has been in the Dow since 1928 when it became the Dow 30, different names at that point, Standard Oil of New Jersey, is more of the fossil fuel. And that seems to be having much of a smaller footprint, if I can use that terminology, uh, online. Uh, And we still have Chevron which is twice the weight because of the pricing mechanism. So instead of having 3% in energy in the Dow, you're going to have 2%. Again, so it was a matter of realigning to some degree. Uh, There were other factors, the the indice, to make it more compatible with what the general market is. Again, we're not looking to forecast the market. We're not looking to beat the market. We're looking to emulate it. Uh, So that was an important item, uh, the, the sales force in there. Uh, the other two, as you mentioned, uh, Pfizer is, is is going out and Amgen coming in. Pfizer is one of the lowest, is the lowest price in the index. They are also doing a spinoff um, uh, of their generic drugs. So the price is going down more. Amgen, big biopharmaceutical, uh, and, and, and that was uh, in there. And as far as the Honeywell goes, the old uh, Raytheon, which is Raytheon and United Technologies together, had spun off Otis uh uh, elevator and carrier air conditioning. So they really had a much small uh, niche in there and looking at the aerospace and defense, Honeywell better, along with the existing uh, Boeing that's in there, better represented that situation. Howard, Dan Roberts here. Uh, we had a colleague of ours today write a little bit of an explainer on just who decides which uh, stocks get booted from the Dow and that it's a little bit arbitrary. It's just a committee of five individuals. And especially at this time when tech stocks are really all the excitement. I mean, every day we're here talking about the FANG names, especially Apple and Tesla. And when the NASDAQ has had the gains it has had, and when the Dow is the only uh, of the major indices that I believe is still negative for the year, do you think that the Dow 30, uh, as an important indicator, is falling out of favor a little bit? No. Two different indices with two different purposes on them. Uh, The S&P, as an example, 500, and and aside far to that. The top five companies in the S&P 500, which are now more top heavy than they've been since at least the 60s, account for about 23% of the industry. Uh, that is also a concern within the S&P 500 because it's market weighted. Okay, but the S&P 500 represents a broad market. You can go down to sectors and do other items. And again, market weighted. The Dow is a different item. Started in 1896 as the Dow itself. Okay, you add them up, you divide, it's an average. Uh, it's not the complicated resource. You couldn't have done the weighting system back in 1896. The bottom line is that most money managers are using the S&P 500 because it's broader and they can slice it different ways, taking sectors, subgroups, selling within, without options, whatever they want. It's a lot less indexed against the Dow. However, the Dow has recognition, the biggest recognition of any industry for getting the size. Okay, They don't have as much as far as index, so the trading won't be as much as if you made these kind of changes in the 500. Uh, but it's definitely not outdated. It's a good benchmark that's using. If you look at the S&P and the 500, over time, they call it very well. Short term, not at all. 
and we are in that short term period. One of the reasons is technology uh, on that. But again, two different indices that then act in different ways. Hey, Howard, what's the impact of this? Because not a lot of money is indexed the Dow, but I mean, it is significant to be included in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So just well, how significant, I guess, is this for investors at this point to see some of these stocks now included in the Dow? It, it is a very big social item. Uh, it is something that each one of these companies uh, that are being added will put in their reports, quarterly, annuals, and their CEOs uh, and, and CFOs all will, will discuss and brag about, as the other ones will explain why they were taken out uh, on there. So it is a major item to be included, but you're correct. There's only about $31 billion literally against it compared to the trillions of dollars on the S&P 500. Uh, so the actual trading for money managers is not as much, but the Dow is used as a benchmark for a lot of things. Uh, and the inclusion is, is, is important on there. So, so will be a much bigger item socially than actually when it comes down to trading for. And then Howard, just quickly before we let you go, um, I'm just curious if, if you guys had had any sense of um, that Apple was thinking about splitting their stock or if they made their decision and then uh, you kind of met and, and the committee thought, well, maybe now, as you mentioned, we're going to have to change some things. I mean, um, had, did it seem like there needed to be a change, I guess, at the Dow, um, just kind of looking at the composition of the group, you know, a, a month ago before Apple had, had announced their their news? Two parts of, the, uh, uh, of that. But, uh, one, we had no knowledge of Apple prior, uh, nor should we have. We have no contact with companies that are going in or out. And these companies knew that they were being taken in or out. That goes for all indices. Uh, the Apple gave an opportunity since the reshuffling to do things that we were looking to do and considering doing. Uh, if each one of these changes had to be viable and justifiable, independent of Apple or the others. Okay. Uh, so Apple just helped it come together where all three could be done in one quick swoop uh, with the reallocations. All right, Howard Silverblatt with S&P Dow Jones Indices. Howard, always great uh, to get your thoughts. Thanks so much for calling in today. Thank you.